Yinsu Orchids and ADD is joining me today to showcase, talk about how we care for our Dendrobium Krista Erdmann. Mine is a variety Thysiflorum Wilmington, but the tag is so deep there is more to it and I shall put the proper name up on the screen. But <laughs> talk about throwing an orchid into the limelight. First time bloomer and boom, into the viewfinder she goes. And thank you so much Insee Orchids and ADD for joining me on this care collab. Should you also grow this orchid and you post videos on social media, let me know please in the comments that you are interested to join in and we will get the ball rolling. Seeing as it's Yinsim and myself, there's plenty of room for more channels to join in. Let me just get one thing out of the way, full transparency. I would never have put this orchid into my shopping cart voluntarily. I have heard certain little things about these orchids that I'm not too keen on. We'll get to that later on. But this was a gift from Luca Orchidein. So kudos to them for actually sending a free plant. Not many nurseries do that. So of course you get a free orchid and then you start taking care of it as you do. And eventually three years later, <laughs> this is the blooming. Now I cannot detect a fragrance on these blooms just yet. Maybe it is a first time bloomer and that is why I don't have a fragrance or maybe they're only just a day old. Now let's go straight into the blooms because that's one of the reasons. Yeah. I wasn't too interested in purchasing anything Krista Erdman, Dendrobium, etc., because they are not long lived. I mean, the spike is so promising. It shows up, it produces it rapidly, the buds just swell, and then boom, one day you wake up and it is in bloom. But in the same event, boom, one day you wake up and all the blooms are on the floor. So their longevity is about 10 days. If you can get two weeks out of them, that's a long time, but. 10 days is usually the norm. And personally, I do have some orchids that behave weirdly in my collection where I would say in hindsight, yeah, maybe not because, you know, you don't do anything for eight months of the year and then all of a sudden in four months, everything is done and dusted and then we've got eight months of silence. Similar happenings here with this Dendrobium Krista Erdmann. The growth pattern of this orchid is pretty much like that. Grows a new growth relatively quickly and then that's it. Nothing. <laughs> and you're left with an orchid in a pot that's to the naked eye doing nothing. On top of that, it is a dendrobium that does not like anything industrial on it. Let's just say pesticides or fungicides. This dendrobium was very, very quick to object when it arrived in my collection that I treated it for a fungus because there were some leaves on it I wasn't too pleased about. They looked a little bit sus to me. And that's this growth right here that is actually blooming right now. So this is a leafless cane right here. <laughs> well, I treated it gently, of course, and it immediately dumped the leaves off of the cane. The whole thing looked like it was about to die. So that was another thing I thought, no, I have hardier dendrobiums than this one. I have some that can really take a little bit more handling than something that's so finicky. But here we are. You never complain if something comes to you as a gift, right? Keep going, keep growing, as they say. Meanwhile, the fungus issue was resolved because whether the treatment worked or not, the leaves were gone, so we didn't have a spread. And then eventually, and literally extended eventually, I got a, another growth growing right here which is probably going to be the one that's going to bloom next year. I was hoping for another spike up here because that growth is marginally larger, but this will be next year. So there seems to be a two year cycle between the canes and the growths that they grow one year, do nothing in adverted commas the next year, then they bloom on the third year of their existence because that is exactly what happened with this growth that is blooming. I received it. It was just leafing out as a new growth and then it did nothing. Well, it dumped its leaves, but it did nothing. Then I grew myself this little itty bitty one that started to dump another leaf and well, here's the concern. But this recent one, recent as in from two years ago, is looking pretty good. Now I'm expecting hopefully to get another new growth in the pot at some stage so that we can then get a successive blooming. It is my understanding as well that these dendrobiums will also produce another spike on older canes. As the orchid then matures, the spectacle becomes so much more interesting. 
doesn't mean the blooms are going to last any longer, but the effect is incredible as these orchids mature. When it comes to the root front, wow, that is a reason I can't get my tag out. I could literally lift the pot up just holding the tag. This orchid is so rooted in, it is fabulous. So let me tell you about my setup. What you see on top here is moss that has populated itself over the years since I've had this orchid. But she is in my preferred setup of Lekka and self-watering. Very, very simple and so not demanding, which is amazing for this dendrobium. Here in southern Spain, where she's at, you would think there would be a need for a lot of water. And if there isn't a lot of water, then you don't want roots of a dendrobium to be excessively wet. None of that applies for this orchid. During the time period that she's not doing anything to the naked eye, so to speak, I only flush this orchid through. I have my microfibers and just flush her. There's no need for fertilizer at the time of her not growing a new growth or I can't see any active root growth either. So this orchid really doesn't need much fertilizer. She likes her flushes. My setup requires that. It pulls oxygen through the pot every time I flush not just because water has oxygen in it, but gravity will pull oxygen through as well. So when it comes to her fertilizing, you can imagine how short the time frame is that this orchid actually gets fertilizer. So when I see a new growth starting, that is when then I will go in with 160 parts per million of a well-balanced fertilizer. In my case, that would be rain mix this year. Previous years, I've been using MSU. So we'll see what the rain mix does this year. But she's in no hurry at all to grow a new growth. I have not seen one for a year now. She has been super busy with the roots. So I supplement as well with calcium and magnesium, possibly once a month at 100 parts per million. And the moment I should detect a new growth at the base, then I would throw in some seaweed at 40 parts per million once a month as well. This orchid really isn't that demanding considering it's a dendrobium, considering that my temperatures during the winter can drop to 14 degrees Celsius indoors where she lives throughout the winter months. They can get really, really hot as well throughout the summer months, up to 40 degrees Celsius, but that is relatively rare. However, I don't have any humidity that I can brag about. This orchid doesn't seem to require that much humidity as long as she is well, well watered. Regardless whether she's in active growth to the naked eye or not, her roots are so abundant that she has a certain demand for water that I've been noticing. And even throughout the winter months, when I let my microfibers just stay damp and I have the reservoirs empty, I find that this orchid prefers a regular flush because the microfiber was heading towards the point of dryness which is pretty surprising, seeing as there was no active growth to my eye, so everything is actually happening in the pot. Based on where she lives summer and winter, she gets a lot, a lot of light. I do scoot her back a little bit from the glass window during the winter months where the angle of the sun is very, very low. I do not trust this orchid that much that I want to have her in direct sunshine, not even in the winter. In the summer as well, she is in bright, bright shade, but very, very, Rarely does she get a lick of direct sunshine unless I am working with her right now and her top leaf is getting a little bit of direct sun. But that is not the norm at all. So I would say bright shade for this orchid when it comes to light requirements and she will bloom for you. She doesn't need that precious real estate of highlight that we would give our cattleyas. And honestly, these blooms are super, super charming. I mean, I love me a frilly lip. I love me a shredded look on the lip as well. I love white blooms. Love me the chrysaline effect that she has when the sun hits the blooms. Everything about these blooms and about this orchid, it speaks to me. And yet I would never have bought her simply because the blooms don't last that long but she's not a space hog so that works in her favor and she is absolutely not demanding when it comes to light whereas other orchids that need that space to bloom they do demand that kind of light so she isn't taking up any primary real estate she is a compact grower everything about this orchid makes it a great candidate for a collection a windowsill 
without the fandangle of lights, humidity, etc., because pretty much that's how she grows here with me. If I were to choose not to move her outdoors in any given summer, she could live right by the glass there, would be the same amount of light. So this orchid doesn't need all the fuss, the kit and the caboodle to be a successful bloomer. And I mean, you can't really look past what she's got. Once again, just know that these blooms will not last very, very long, but they will get better and better the more the orchid matures. Now that I have her in my collection, she is happy to stay. Now that I've gotten her to bloom, I really love the blooms. I just want to make sure that everybody who is looking this video up is aware that the blooms do not last long. But everything else I've mentioned makes this orchid a fabulous acid in a collection. If you were thinking of expanding the variety of orchids that you can grow in your home without having to go and change anything that you're doing right now and buy all this fancy stuff to make her happy and bloom, nope. In this case, this orchid will do really well in a windowsill kind of grow environment. I want to say thank you so much for Yinsi Orchids and ADD for being so quick to say, yes, I'll join you on a care collab, even though it's just the two of us. <laughs> if I missed out on any information, if there was something I mentioned that wasn't clear enough, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, appreciate you being here. Have yourselves a beautiful day. One condition though that you please continue to stay safe. Take care. Bye.